folks, Bear Clans Hiking Sedona Podcast. Episode 30 today is all about trail talk. Essentially, the whole entire topic is going to be about camping in Sedona. And just as an intro, I want to clearly state that everyone has their definition of camping. And with the inception of this neat little glamping thing that's been happening, it has taken a different direction. But this podcast, however, is designed for people looking at traditional camping, either with a tent, camper, or an RV. And before I go into all the details, all the prices that I mention here, folks, are based on website information. Rates are going to vary depending on the time of year, so you've got to do your homework. I'm leaving phone numbers so that you can contact each place. It's up to you to make your choices and then decide from there. So the first question is, where can you camp in Sedona? I'm going to make this simple. What kind of camping are you looking for? Are you in an RV? Are you in a tent? Are you in a trailer? Do you have a fifth wheel? All of those things are going to make a difference. So we have the ability to provide you with campsites, dry camping, backpacking, or just pull off the road and sleep in your car. The style is totally up to you. So what we're going to do first is we're going to begin with campsite camping. If you have a large trailer or RV, these campsites will have limited availability, if any at all. So I'm going to discuss that as well. So we'll talk about your requirements later. Sedona has three official campsite campgrounds, Manzanita, Cave Springs, and Pine Flat. All of those three are campgrounds and they're all located up 89A North. I'll give you the directions or general directions to them as I go through them. Just an FYI, we have a lot of day camp sites, but they are not overnight sites, so be careful what you're looking for. If you just want to hang out and take a lunch break and sit at a picnic table, we have a bunch of those up 89A and throughout Sedona as well. We also have a couple of state parks that allow you to bring your own foods and plenty of picnic tables and such. But again, those are day type camping areas. So the first one, Manzanita Campground, it kind of goes like this. It's located on 89A North heading towards Flagstaff and it's just before Slide Rock State Park. It's going to be on the right side and the entrance and exits are very tricky. They go steep down and they're just on the side of the road. And, it, you know, if you blink your eye, you might go past it. So make sure you've got your GPS system at the ready and be prepared for the, the steep grade going down into the campsite. They have 19 campsites available. They're all small in size and only one vehicle per site. They do have an outhouse on site. They have a seven day max limit. No utility hookups. They have grills, tables, and fire pits. They respect quiet time to be somewhere around 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And that's traditional for just about every campsite that's here in Sedona. Very minimal cell coverage, folks. Everything that I'm talking about goes up 89A into Oak Creek Canyon. Limited cell reception depending on where you're staying. As of this podcast, the rates appear to be about $22 per night. Phone number to get in touch with Manzanita is 928-282-4119. Moving on to Cave Springs Campground. This is also located on 89 North, heading towards Flagstaff, just about a mile past what is called West Fork Trail or the Call of the Canyon. It's the day park that's uh, on the left-hand side. Cave Springs Campground is about a mile past that on the left-hand side as well. They have 82 sites. It can take RVs, but only up to 36 feet. They have grills, fire pits, and tent pads. They don't have any hookups, but they do have drinking water, showers, the vault toilets. They have an on-site store for snacks and things. So you probably, you know, in case you're not prepared for overnight camping, it's a good in a pinch kind of thing. They have minimal, if any, cell service. And as of this podcast, the rates are somewhere around $22 a night as well. Phone number for them is 928-282-1629. Now we're moving on to the bigger setup, which is called Pine Flat Campground. This one is the newest campground of Sedona. It's added just a couple years back. It used to be a day camp use only location, and then they've just decided they can expand it and turn it into an overnight setup. So it's on 89A North, like I've said before, and it's just before the switchbacks begin towards the Flagstaff and about one mile past the Cave Springs campground. And it's also on the left. So check this out. If you can't get a site at Manzanita, you got Cave Spring. If you don't have Cave Spring, then you've got Pine Flat. And if you don't have Pine Flat, then you're going to have to look outside of the boundaries of the city of Sedona, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Pine Flat has 59 sites. RVs are accessible. They do have laundry, a dump station. They do drinking water. They have fire rings and grills. They have on-site toilets. And again, as of this podcast, about $22 a night. Phone number to contact them, 
3233. Now we're going to get a little bigger. Let's get into the RV sites that are located in Sedona. And there are only two RV parks in Sedona right now. Rancho Sedona is the biggest and the best out of the group. It's just because they have the most room. It's located off what is called Schnebley Hill Road, and the address is 135 Bear Wallow Lane. Yeah, you can take the joke with you, Bear Wallow Lane. As of this podcast, the daily rate's running around $42 for partial sites. The weekly rates are available, and they do go up in their daily rates up into the 80s, so that all depends on your desires. They have laundry, toilets, showers. They do have free Wi-Fi, a big bonus there. They have a big rig access as well, and they have the 30 and 50 amp hookups. Phone number for them is 888-641-4261. Next one is the Oak Creek Mobile Lodge. Now, folks, this is more of a trailer park setup, but they do offer up availabilities for RVs. It's located off Route 179 North, heading into the center of Sedona, but it's before you get to Talakapaki, and it'll be on your left. The address that they have listed is 1156 Highway 179 in Sedona. As of this podcast, their daily rate's starting right around $55 a night. They have full hookups, waterfront access, pull-through sites. They can serve up to 36 foot. Um, They have slide-outs are okay, self-contained. They have all-level sites, pets are allowed. They also have the 30 and 50 amps, and they have a laundry room. Their phone number is 928-282-7701. There are many different RV sites around Sedona and the Verde Valley, so I'm going to give you their names, and you can do the work to find out if you want to stay there or not. And these are all designed for RVs. However, some of those RV parks also have tent camping as well. So just remember that and pick your choice as you need to. Lolo Mai Springs, L-O-L-O-M-A-I, Lolo Mai Springs, located off Page Springs Road. That's kind of in between Cornville and Sedona. There's a little area where there's incredible wineries. So Page Springs Road is halfway between Sedona and Cornville. There's also Page Springs RV Park. It's also known as the Sunrise Resorts RV Park. Uh, They're also located off Page Springs. They're about a mile and a half past the Lolo Mai Springs RV Park. And there are around maybe 10 or 15 other RV parks within an hour's drive of Sedona. You can look up things like Camp Verde RV Parks, Flagstaff RV Parks, or Cottonwood RV Parks. They're all over the place. Now what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to talk a little bit about overnight camping, backpacking, and hiking kind of things. First and foremost, in the city of Sedona, it's not allowed inside the city. In fact, you can't do any overnight camping at any of our trailheads. But you do have access on any of the Forest Service roads. As you're coming into Sedona from 89A northward, you're going to be coming across several side roads on 89A north. You're going to find that there is accessibility for hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of tent parking, car parking, where you can just park your car, pull out your tent, pitch it right next to your car and go. Or you can sleep in your car even for an overnight or two. Now, these off-road camping sites are available for 14 days in a row. That means you can camp, you can RV, you can pull your car, your van, your camper vans off the sides of these roads and find little tiny nooks to be able to park in, and you can stay in those areas for 14 days. After your 14 days, you're going to have to change the county that you're in. So if you are in Sedona on the Yavapai County camping, you have to change over to the Coconino side of Sedona. But that's totally up to you. Now these campsites or these available areas are located essentially on the outskirts of Sedona. If you're heading north on 89A towards Sedona, about three or four miles before getting into the city, you're going to see a couple of major pieces called Forest Road 525 and 89B. So those are right across from each other, about maybe three to five miles outside of Sedona heading north. You'll see the pull-offs, and 525 is loaded with areas. And the road itself, the forest road, goes in at least 10 miles. So you've got plenty of opportunities. It's windy. It's up and down. Gorgeous. So it's a dirt road from the beginning to the end. And it does connect all the way out to the Dry Creek Road area, which is also known as Boynton Pass Road. So feel free to take those and pitch your tents and go there as well. There is also access going up to Flagstaff. If you're on the north end of Sedona on 89A, heading towards Flagstaff, right after the switchbacks, the gorgeous switchback road, you're going to get up to where it flattens out with the ponderosa pine trees all around you. 
as you continue heading towards Flagstaff for about five to seven miles, you're going to see pull-offs on your left and right. Those are available for overnight camping as well, unless they have the gates closed. They're fully accessible for overnights, but there are no campfires allowed. Sedona is known to the world as the day hiking capital of the United States. What that means is we have trails designed for people just to hike during the day and then call it a night, go to the hotel and stay somewhere else. But for the avid hikers like myself, I go to places when I want to hike, I'm looking at doing overnight camping. And I don't want to have to necessarily pitch my tent about three miles away from trailheads. So there is the availability to do some hikes, hike up into the national forest and do some camping. The thing that I am going to insist on is do not use open fires when you're tent camping in the wilderness. Guys, we are known as a desert here in Sedona. It's a high desert and we have greens, but our green trees are exceptionally dry. Do not, please do not do an open fire when you're camping in the national forest. Only use those little sternos, those tiny compact burners to do your fires making your hot items. Please respect the land and respect the possibility that you could start a major forest fire. So as far as camping in Sedona, we've just covered pretty much everything that there is to cover. You have all sorts of available hiking areas. You have all sorts of available camping areas. It all depends on your style of camping that you're looking for. I know there's some glamping areas here in Sedona and some new ones are being built right now. But understand this whole podcast is designed for the people that are doing the old school style, traditional camping, whether it's the tent or car parking, pulling off to the side of the road, sleeping in your front seat or the bed of your truck. But all of these places are available, as you can tell. So that's about it, folks. Thank you very much. I hope this gives you some answers to a lot of your questions. I know there's a lot of uh, social media sites that are always asking the same questions over and over again. I'll be posting this podcast on all of those as much as possible just to make it easier for everybody. And the fact that I gave you some phone numbers gives you a leg up on your vacation plans. So thank you very much, folks. Thank you all for listening in. God bless you all, and I hope to see you on the rocks. Thank you again for listening in today, folks. Your time and energy is greatly appreciated. Please feel free to download these episodes, favorite them, share them, and even visit my YouTube channel, Yavacoco Productions, for all the podcast playlists and for some insanely cool videos of my hiking adventures that I do in Sedona. That all helps me to continue to bring you more exciting podcasts and videos, both for healing, spirituality, as well as just kind of amazing videos of Sedona, Arizona. For those of you wanting to dig in a little deeper, maybe you're struggling with some inner issues or you're in a recovery path, from an addiction or just looking for inspirational discussions about healing, check out all of my podcasts on your favorite podcast players. Titles like Path to Recovery Podcast, Cognitive Awareness with a Touch of God Podcast, Bear Clans Hiking Sedona Podcast, and yes, I even have one called Star Wars The Bear Awakens Podcast. We are here to help you. And what we're trying to do is offer you things that can help you for free. Plus, there's entertainment involved with a lot of these anyway. So thank you again, folks. God bless you, and I hope to see you on the rocks. And even visit my YouTube channel, Yavacoco Productions, for all the podcast playlists, and for some insanely cool videos of my hiking adventures that I do in Sedona. That all helps me to continue to bring you more exciting podcasts and videos, both for healing, spirituality, as well as just kind of amazing videos of Sedona, Arizona. For those of you wanting to dig in a little deeper, maybe you're struggling with some inner issues or you're in a recovery path from an addiction or just looking for inspirational discussions about healing, Check out all of my podcasts on your favorite podcast players. Titles like Path to Recovery Podcast, Cognitive Awareness with a Touch of God Podcast, Bear Clans Hiking Sedona Podcast, and yes, I even have one called Star Wars The Bear Awakens Podcast. We are here to help you, and what we're trying to do is offer you things that can help you for free. Plus, there's entertainment involved with a lot of these anyway. 
So thank you again, folks. God bless you. And I hope to see you on the rocks.